Ever wondered how to go about writing notes, like what information to include, how to structure them, or even how to make them look nice? Well, keep watching as this will all be answered in this video. Hey guys, welcome back to Study Club. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I write my lecture notes. Before I get into the video, I just want to say a huge happy new year to everyone. It's officially 2020, which is crazy. We're in the new decade. I hope this year is bigger and better for all of you. I encourage you all to set some new goals for the new year. Setting goals is always a good thing for motivation. And now would be a great time to start. So set some goals. In this video in particular, I'm going to be sharing with you step by step how to go from sitting in the lecture to actually producing your notes towards the end. This is the exact process that I would go through after every lecture for basically all my subjects in first year uni and this is what I found worked for me. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Why do I keep doing this? So before I get into the step-by-step -step process of how I actually write my notes, I thought I would address three things. The first one is what I actually do in the lecture. The second one is when do I write my notes? And then the last thing I wanted to address is how long does it take me to write my notes? So if you're interested in hearing about those three things then keep watching, if not, you can skip to the time on the screen, which I'll put here, if you're just curious about the method I take to write my notes. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is what I actually do in the lecture. So I did a bit of experimenting at the beginning of my first year. There are a few things that I've seen people do and a few things that I've tried myself. The first one would be sitting in the lecture with my laptop open and just typing things that the lecturer would say. I tried preparing my notes before the lecture and then just annotating the notes that I'd written. Another thing I see people do is just sit in the lecture and listen. And then the last thing is annotating. So out of all those methods, the one that I found worked best for me was to annotate the lecture slides. So the reason why I annotate my notes is because I find it's the most efficient method in terms of it doesn't require too much preparation. But annotating your notes, you can still pay attention to what they're saying. Sometimes you get lecturers who just read off the slides and if you're trying to write the notes in the lecture, you might just write down word for word what they're saying. I found that's what I did when I was typing and it sort of wasn't going in my head. I was just like mindlessly typing everything they were saying. And sometimes there's a lot of verbatim you just don't really want in your notes. What I found when annotating the slides as well was you don't have to rewatch the lecture. And that's something I strongly recommend that you don't necessarily depend upon. If you're going to the lecture and then going home and rewatching the lecture, it can be a bit of a waste of time. I recommend that you go look at other sources before you really have to resort and go watch it again. So to annotate the slides, I usually use my iPad. I will import the PDFs of the lecture slides into GoodNotes and then just write with my Apple Pencil on the slides. But if you don't have an iPad, of course, you can print out the lecture slides. I do still do this for some of my subjects. For example, anatomy last semester, we had to bring in the lecture slides into the labs, but we weren't allowed to bring electronics. So I would print the slides for the lecture and then just annotate on there. But something I do recommend you do if you are going to print them is to do the four slides to one page because otherwise you'd waste a lot of paper. I'll show you on the screen here how to do it when you print. You basically just go into the layout section and press four slides to one page. And then I also print it double sided to minimize the amount of paper I'm using. So moving on, the second thing I wanted to talk about was when do I write my notes? As I mentioned earlier, at the beginning of the semester, I tried writing my notes beforehand, but that didn't really work because some days I had a lot of lectures at once and it was just a lot of notes to prepare beforehand. So what I try to do now, and this has been something I could stick to, and that was I would write my notes after the lecture, but before the next lecture. Some subjects you require knowledge of the last lecture to understand the next one. And because I try to always go and attend my lectures in person, this meant that sometimes if I didn't understand concepts from the last one, the next one was just very confusing. Something I'd recommend you do is try to complete your notes as soon as the lecture finishes. That way, when you go into the next lecture, you have a better understanding of the topic if it's a continuation. Or it also just makes you more consistent in staying on top of your notes so it doesn't all pile up before the exam period. Okay, and the last thing that I probably get asked the most about my notes is how long does it take me to write my notes? If you've looked on my Instagram and seen my handwritten notes and stuff, you'd think it would take me hours to write my notes to try and make them neat and aesthetic. But in reality, the time it takes me to write my notes really just depends on how hard I think the concept is and how long it takes me to understand it. So the time it takes me to write my notes will be different to how 
long it takes you to write the same set of notes because I might find it harder to understand this concept. I might have to go see the textbook, watch some videos about it to fully grasp what I'm writing about. Across the board, it usually takes me like an hour, an hour and a half to write my notes. If I find the topic really, really hard, it can take me up to like two, three hours. It also just depends on how quick I'm willing to write and how motivated I am as well. So there's all these different factors coming in to how long it takes me. In order to make them neat and aesthetic, that's sort of just something that comes with practice over time. I find the more I hand write my notes, the neater my handwriting gets. And also with all the brush lettering and headings and stuff like that, I have like the same three set of headers that I always use. So it doesn't take me long to write them. And I sort of just interchange them between my notes, but it doesn't take long at all. Like for my math subjects last semester, I actually wrote my notes in the lecture. So that can sort of give you a general idea of it doesn't take very long to make it neat and aesthetic. And also it's probably not a good idea to spend all your time trying to make it look nice. Just really get to the point of understanding the concept and that's how long it takes you to write. Moving on to actually writing my notes now, the first step I'll do is set up my resources. I don't really use too many resources. The only things that I'll take out are my annotated lecture notes and then my writing utensils, so some paper and pens. The paper that I use is A4 lined paper from Muji. I like to use loose leaf paper because it makes it easy to take it in and out and then rearrange when I put it in my binder. Then in terms of what I use to write with, I really only use these three pens. I will pick out one color of the Tombow dual brush marker. This I use as a highlighter. And then I use a Pentel Touch brush pen to write my headings. And then finally a 0.5 black Muji gel pen to write the main body of text. Once I've got all my resources, the first thing I'll do when I'm writing my notes is write the header. I will almost always use the Pentel Touch Brush Pen to write the main header and this I'll write in the top in the center and it'll typically be brush lettered. The title that I write down is usually exactly the same as the title of the lecture. This just makes it easy to look over on the lecture slides if I need to. Once I finish that I'll take the Tombow brush marker in any color of your choice and then draw two lines on the side next to it. Then finally on the header, I'll just take a normal pen and then write the lecture number in one of the highlighted strips, usually the one on the right. And the reason I do this is it just makes it easy to organize the order of my notes later on. And then it's also good to write the lecture number in case in your revision later on you don't understand a certain concept, you know where to look back on which topic, like which part of the textbook and which slides you need to refer to. In this next step, I'm going to introduce to you the double S double D framework that I've just made up. And this is the structure in which I would normally write my notes in. One of the hardest things when writing your notes is knowing what to include. I always try not to just blindly copy down the PowerPoint because I know it's not always written in a style that I can easily understand. So to help with that, I try and follow this framework and include SSDD. So the first S stands for syllabus point. Following the syllabus point or learning outcomes will help to direct what type of information you should be including, the sort of processes and definitions you need to include. And I use it as a guide to section off my notes and create subheadings, which is what the next S stands for. For my subheadings, I take key words from the syllabus point to expand upon. So here my first one is about glycolysis. Typically, this is where I integrate the aesthetic part and try different headers. So in this example, I've just quickly brush lettered it and added three dashes to the end with the bullet tip of my Tombow marker, which is really nice and simple. This now leads me on to the first D, which stands for definition. I always try to add definitions of the keywords right underneath the subheading, so it acts like a little introduction. This is really important because I find definitions to be crucial in having a broad understanding of the concept and it's just easy to find if it's right at the top of the section. To make it more obvious, I usually highlight it and typically this is the only thing I will copy down word for word exactly how it's written in the slides. The last point of this framework is D for dot points or diagrams. This part is probably the most variable among my notes as it depends on how the information can be best summarized. In this example here, I found it easier to visually understand the process so I drew a diagram of what happens to the molecules. When drawing diagrams, try to keep them simple and concise with minimal words. That way it's easy to understand and doesn't take too much time. Once that's completed, I basically just repeat this framework over and over again until I've finished the entire lecture and fulfilled all the learning outcomes.
As I mentioned earlier, depending on the type of information you're writing about, you can either draw a diagram or use dot points. In some cases, you can even do both. Here, with this learning outcome, I found it easier to understand it if I had drawn the diagram and then written short step-by-step -step method dot points to outline the process. Whereas with the following learning outcome, as it was comparing and contrasting two different things, I thought a table was the best way to summarize the content. So those are just some examples of how you can summarize and present your information in your notes. Whichever method you decide to choose, ensure that you write things down in the way that made sense to you when you first learnt it. That way when you come back to it in the future to revise, you'll be able to comprehend it again. And with that being said, that's all I have for this video. I hope you found this useful and can apply it to writing your own notes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe down below and turn on the notification bell to be notified when I post next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!